Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. This video is going to look at using the cross product to find areas in 3D space. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at the magnitude of the cross product. So here based on our formula for the cross product, we know that the magnitude of U cross V would be the square of each component added up and then we would take the square root of it all. This isn't a formula we need to have memorized. Remember, as long as we get the process of finding a determinant, like we did in our cross product intro video. So we're gonna take a brief journey here. You may wanna put your pencil down just for the next minute or so, but just bear with us. So taking a brief journey using this magnitude, I promise it'll pay off for us in the long run. If this is the magnitude of U cross V here, then if we square both sides, we get rid of the square root. So this is the magnitude squared here. You can probably see distributing all of this out and then combining all the like terms and such from all this right hand side is pretty monstrous. So we're gonna skip all the algebra here for the sake of you staying awake. Uh, in short, after doing all of that work, we get something that ends up looking like this. And I think this is sort of a nice place in the algebra to continue from. So we've skipped a little bit of work and now continuing on from here because we can see some items we might recognize and relate to stuff that we already know, right? So if we look at this first set of parentheses, you might notice this is also a magnitude squared. This is the magnitude of u squared. And similarly, we can probably see that this second set of parentheses is the magnitude of v squared. So we've got two magnitude statements in the first half of this formula. If we look at the last set of parentheses, the inside hopefully looks something familiar to you. This is actually a dot product in here. So we actually have the dot product of u and v squared, right? So we get minus u dot v all squared. So to make this a little easier to write in one term altogether, we'll go ahead and change our dot product into a formula that we've covered that involves cosine. So we get magnitudes of u and v times cosine of theta for our u dot v. All of that's gonna be squared. We're gonna rewrite our dot product as this other way of writing the dot product. Remember, theta is the angle between these vectors u and v, right? So now we go ahead and we factor out these common magnitudes squared from each term, leaving us with a lovely Pythagorean identity, right, of one minus cosine squared theta, which we can then change to sine squared theta, of course. And so if you look at the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen, we really get that the square of the magnitude of the cross product is equal to these magnitudes squared times sine squared theta, okay? So now this is the point where you can pick your pencil back up and maybe follow along with us. So looking at everything being squared here, I think we can do a nice simplification here and simplify to the magnitude of u cross v being equal to magnitude u times magnitude v times sine of theta. And at this point you may be saying, why do we care about any of this? But this little nugget right here is what's going to help us in finding areas. So we'll just kind of set that formula up in the top right corner here for now, and let's look at finding the area of a parallelogram defined by two vectors in space. And here it's going to be u and v. So when we say defined by two vectors, we think of two adjacent sides of the parallelogram being those two vectors, with the other two sides just being copies of those vectors as well. So we might remember that the formula for the area of a parallelogram, same as area of a rectangle really, is simply the width times the height of the parallelogram. For the width, the way I've drawn this one here, I think you can probably tell the width is just however long vector u is. So we'll say our area is going to be the magnitude of u times whatever the height is. When we talk about the height, we mean the height perpendicular to the base here, not the slant height. Uh, some basic right triangle trigonometry here is going to tell us that the height here is actually equal to the magnitude of v times sine of theta for our height. And that would mean that the area of the parallelogram is equal to our magnitude of u cross v here because magnitude of u times magnitude of v times sine of theta we just found at the beginning of our video is the same as the magnitude of u cross v. So the area of a parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of the cross product of those vectors. If the magnitude of the cross product of two vectors is equal to the area of the parallelogram with those vectors as adjacent sides, what do we notice if we cut a parallelogram in half like this? 
you can see that we have half our parallelogram on one side and the other half on the other side of the line I've drawn here. In other words, half a parallelogram cut this way will give us a triangle defined by vectors u and v. So that tells us that we can find the area of a triangle defined by two vectors by taking half the magnitude of the cross product, since a triangle is going to be half of a parallelogram. So we'll go ahead and work through a couple of area examples with you. So this one says find the area of the parallelogram defined by vector v, which is negative 1, 3, 2, and vector w, which is 4, 1, 0. And so remember the area of the parallelogram, so our area, is going to be the magnitude of the cross product of our vector here is the magnitude of v cross w. Well, let's first go ahead and figure out what is v cross w, right? So vector v cross vector w. If you remember from our cross product intro video, we set this up as a 3x3 three three determinant with our standard unit vectors in the top row and our vectors in the order stated here in the next rows. So negative 1, 3, 2 goes in our second row, that's vector v, and then w, 4, 1, 0 goes in the bottom here. And remember we take an entry in the top row here, and we mark out the row and column that that entry is in, and multiply that entry by the 2 by 2 determinant containing those entries left over. So for i hat's case, it would be 3, 2, 1, 0. Remember, it's always minus j hat when we do this second part here. So marking out the row and column j hat is in, we have negative 1, 2, 4, 0 left over. So negative 1, 2, 4, 0, plus k hat. And if we mark out k hat's row and column, you'll see we have negative 1, 3, 4, 1. So multiply by the determinant of negative 1, 3, 4, 1 as a 2 by 2. And if we do this, we'll get i hat times 3 times 0 would be 0, minus 1 times 2 would be 2, minus j hat times our 2 by 2 determinant, negative 1 times 0 would be 0, minus 4 times 2 would give us 8, plus k hat times our 2 by 2 determinant, negative 1 times 1 would give us negative 1, minus 4 times 3 would give us 12. And if we simplify here, we'll get negative 2 i hat minus j hat times negative 8 gives us plus 8 j hat. k hat times negative 13 here, so minus 13 k hat. That's our v cross w, and so now we want the magnitude of v cross w, right? So our magnitude of v cross w is going to be the square root of all of these components squared and added up, just a magnitude problem here. So negative 2 squared plus 8 squared plus negative 13 squared. So that'll actually give us the square root of 4 plus 64 plus 169 and that would actually give us the square root of 237 for our area of this parallelogram. Let's work through one more type of problem with you here. We want to find the area of the triangle in space with vertices P210, Q, which is negative 1, 0, 1, and R, which is 0, 0, 3. Now you'll notice these are points in space, not vectors. These are vertices, the corners of the triangle. And the idea here, the area of the triangle, is really going to be finding the area of what would be the parallelogram, but dividing by 2. Now this area of the parallelogram is going to be based on the cross product of two vectors, and we don't have vectors yet. So what we'll do is we'll find two vectors with the same initial point. So we could find, for example, vector PQ, and we could find vector PR, and then we could use those, and we could find the magnitude of PQ cross PR. Then we'll have the magnitude of a cross product, and because we want a triangle, not a parallelogram, 
we'll divide by 2. Okay, so let's figure out PQ first. Remember that will be terminal point minus initial point. So for PQ, we'll do negative 1 minus 2 will be negative 3. 0 minus 1 will be negative 1. And then 1 minus 0 will give us 1. So our vector PQ is negative 3, negative 1, positive 1. PR then would be terminal point minus initial point, so R minus P here. As a vector, we will get 0 minus 2 will be negative 2. 0 minus 1 will be negative 1. And 3 minus 0 will be positive 3. Next thing we'll need is the cross product of these, right? To be part of our formula, then we'll find the magnitudes and then we'll divide by 2. But let's do our cross product next. So this will be vector PQ cross vector PR. Remember, we'll set up our i hat, j hat, k hat in the first row. Since it's the order pq then pr, we'll take pq as our first row under the standard unit vectors here, negative 3, negative 1, 1, and then pr last, negative 2, negative 1, 3. So this cross product will have i hat, we'll mark out the row and column i hat is in. That leaves us negative 1, 1, negative 1, 3. So i hat times the determinant of those four entries minus j hat times, if we mark out the row and column j hat is in, we have negative 3, 1, negative 2, 3. So our 2 by 2 determinant multiplying negative j hat will be negative 3, 1, and negative 2, 3, plus k hat. If we mark out the row and column k hat is in, we have negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 1, That will multiply k hat. So if we do these two by two determinants, we'll have i hat times negative one times three would be negative three minus negative one times one would be negative one minus negative one would really be plus one there minus j hat. Negative three times three would be negative nine minus negative two times one would be negative two minus negative two would be plus two plus k hat times negative 3 times negative 1 would be positive 3 minus negative 2 times negative 1 would be positive 2. So here we get the vector negative 3 plus 1 would be negative 2 i hat. Negative j hat, here we get a negative 7 in here, so this would actually be plus 7 j hat. Plus 3 minus 2 would be 1, so we just get 1 k hat. That is our PQ cross PR, our cross product, and now we need to know the magnitude of this, right? So we'll take the magnitude and then we'll have to remember to divide by 2. So the magnitude of this will be negative 2 squared plus 7 squared plus 1k hat, right? So this is just 1 squared. All of that over 2. So we'll get the square root of 4 plus 49 plus 1 over 2. That will actually give us the square root of 54 over 2. And we can actually simplify this if I do it down here. So the square root of 54 over 2. I know a perfect square that goes into 54. 9 is a perfect square and that goes into 54. So I pull out the square root of 9. So if I pull out 9, 9 times 6 is 54, so that would leave a root 6 left over. We actually get 3 root 6 over 2 for the area of our triangle in space with these as vertices. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. Hopefully, this helps you with your areas using the cross product. We'll see you in the next video.